All right, so I am going to go ahead and get started with another Marine. Now, this is the one that I worked on yesterday, or last time that you guys saw. It is a Astral Claw, and it turned out pretty good. Uh, again, the Astral Claws don't have a Primaris variant, so there's a little bit of imagination that had to be used. That free hand is not great, as you can see, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of improve with time. And like I uh, mentioned yesterday, it's all about uh, doing what you can with it and then always coming back later. And you, you can do a lot later to make things look a little bit nicer. So that's the plan. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and move right on to another member of the Bad Ab Wars. And that is going to be a... Mantis Warrior. Now the Mantis Warriors are a green color, a little bit lighter green. All right, so this is probably gonna be what I'm using here. I'm just gonna be putting this right in to this lovely airbrush uh, that you guys may have saw last time. All right, so we've got the airbrush ready to go. We've got some of that Death World, uh, actually not Death World green, that Cat's Eye green. We're just gonna add a little bit of thinner. It's a decent amount there. And I know you're not supposed to do it, but I'm just going to mix it in here because that's what I like to do. Again, you know, I've got those little cups. I can mix it in those, but I'm lazy. So I'm not going to do that, right? This is about painting efficiently, getting things done. So that's going to be our main goal here. So let's go ahead and get started. We're just going to do a thin coat or two of this real bright green. Uh, we've got some yellow shoulder pads, some yellow that's going to go on the uh, sort of face mask there. All right, so let's go back in for another coat here. Now, I know that it's not Vallejo, but I really like these uh, Reaper Bones paints. They are pretty thin, uh, but you definitely do still need to thin them down a little bit in the airbrush, but they just, they always seem to have really good consistency. Um, and you can technically just do it straight out of the bottle as well, uh, which is something that is really nice, especially with the paintbrush. But I will say um, they have a vast variety of colors and they're a lot more affordable than uh, Vallejo paints, especially if you are going to buy a bunch of them. Now, I know that it might be a little bit ironic because I say that I don't like Primaris Marines and then I come out here and I bring a Primaris Marine to a series on the Bad Ab War, which are specifically not Primaris. But uh, trust me, it's just because those are the models that I had lying around. If I had a bunch of Firstborns, I would definitely use that. Now, this Averland Sunset is probably my favorite yellow. I've got a really, really bright yellow. In fact, let me grab it here. It's another one of those. Uh, reaper paints this one's candle or I'm sorry canary yellow and as you can see it's a lot brighter and i use the canary yellow for fire effects and stuff like that uh, the really bright parts of the flames i'll use that in combination with this candle light yellow which is going to be a little bit closer to Averland sunset so a little bit brighter but those two are going to be great for those effects however if we're going with yellow on space marine armor it always seems to be Averland Sunset, obviously, because GW makes the paint for it. And so that's probably what they use there in the stores. Now, the Mantis Warriors are that bright green. They have sort of a bronze chest plate and they, uh, sorry, a bronze chest eagle, which we're going to have to get in there and get some Balthazar gold on that. And then they've got yellow uh, on the shoulder pads with a Mantis symbol on one of those shoulder pads, just like the Astral Claws yesterday. I uh, had that uh, astral claw looking thing uh, in the last video. So we are going to do our best to get that mantis on this shoulder pad, but I don't think it's going to turn out uh, very good at all. But that's just my <laughs> opinions. Again, we're going to try our best. We're going to get a little better. I'll see what I can get on camera. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not going to be able to get it all. I'm going to try to do a little bit more detail and, uh, and then see what we can do with that. But once we get started on that chest plate, uh, once this is all dried up, we can move forward. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to painting those shoulder pads. Now as for the yellow paint, this Everland Sunset goes on really nice, kind of thick. 
Now, I'm not saying straight out of the pot. I mean, I did thin it a little bit on the palette, but honestly, it's really not so bad. Now, again, like always, don't be afraid to pick that model up and hold it in some weird angles because uh, trust me, if it helps you paint a little bit better, right? That's a win. So you're gonna wanna do that. Now, again, just like last time, if you make any mistakes, not a big deal, right? It is going to happen and it's gonna be an easy fix. All you need to do is just get some of that cat's eye green back out. Now that's why I do things in the order that I do. I try to work from what would be the hardest to reach to the easiest to reach. So after a base coat. So theoretically I should really be working on, you know, this uh, Aquila here underneath, but because I'm not working on the gun, I can work on that first. Any mistakes that I get on the gun are gonna be painted over and you're not gonna see them. And so that is really key if you're planning on finishing a model in a timely manner. Gonna get a little bit more water in this paint now, and we're gonna come back in slightly thinner than on the other shoulder pad, just to see if it makes any difference. Now this yellow I do use for my Space Wolves shoulder pads, the ones that have the yellow on their shoulder pads, whether they're Wolf Guard or uh, Blood Claws or anything like that. So. This is not the only time that I'll ever use this yellow. It's uh, it's definitely a mainstay in my painting. Now, the Mantis Warriors, again, like the Astral Claws, uh, were one of the newer founding uh, Space Marine chapters. In fact, they were formed roughly during the 34th millennium. Now, in the 34th millennium, they had been created from the white scars actually as their gene seed now the white scars uh had a rather difficult time uh right around that point in time and they really needed uh, some help defending what they had to defend especially around the maelstrom so the uh, empire or rather the imperium of man decided that it would be best to instead assign four new chapters from that newer founding uh, to guard the maelstrom again talked about it last time but the maelstrom is going to be that sort of mini warp uh area that is going to have some chaos uh coming out of it now the important thing about that is that four chapters were selected for this so you've got the uh, mantis warriors obviously you've got the lamenters you've got the astral claws and then you also have uh, one more, and that's going to be the Charnel Guard Claws. It looks like they, even the Primaris variants uh, of them, do not have colored shin pads or, or knee pads, rather. So they really just have a yellow on their face. And so this part of their mask, which is going to be real difficult to get in there, we're going to need to paint that yellow. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Again, if you make a mistake, right, which I'm definitely going to do, it's not a problem, easy to fix, right? Just like that. And we'll even get it in those eyes because once we paint those eyes, they're probably gonna be red like they are in the reference picture. And so yellow over, uh, red over yellow is gonna look a little bit better than red over green. So see that right there and perfect. All right, so while that is drying there just a little bit, let's get some of those harder to reach places. So the Aquila, the Under Armour, and that sort of thing. So let's start with the Under Armour uh, because um, just because it's a little bit more difficult to get. Again, Black Templar Contrast Paint works fantastic for this. Let's go ahead and get it in that holder so that we don't have any accidents, uh, which has happened before. Get excess water. Let's just go straight in with this. I'm not going to sort of thin this out or anything like that. Again, if we make a mistake, it's gonna be easy to cover up, so it's not a big deal. Now, one of my favorite little projects that I did was I painted a Space Marine on the sprue. It was a Space Marine just like this one, and it was uh, still on the sprue, and I painted it. And that was a really fun project to do. I would say, uh, in fact, probably had more fun doing that than painting a lot of units for quite a few armies that I have. Now why I think it's important to do those sorts of projects, just painting for the fun of painting, well one, it teaches you that uh, 
you don't have a deadline, right? So when you're painting with, for that sort of reason, you don't need to get it done because you're not ever gonna play with it. It's not gonna be in an army. So that's the first big sort of relief, I guess you could say, when you paint something like that, is it's uh, a lot less stressful. Nobody else is, has to see it. It's not like it has to go on the tabletop. So that means that you also get to avoid, um, you know, the fear of being ridiculed or whatever for your paint job, even though you, you really shouldn't care about what other people think uh, about your paint job or really anything at all, to be honest. Do your own thing. But it kind of relieves that and it also gives you time to practice. Now, practice, of course, makes perfect. And so you're going to want to do as much of that as possible. And so even if you're just painting something for fun, that is practice and practice makes you better. We're going to do a bronzy gold because I think that's going to look good. So let's get that shaken up. And let's get started. Again, Balthazar Gold, one of my favorite paints from GW. Just all around really good coverage. All right, we'll get that down there on palette. Thin it out just a little bit and let's shut that up and let's get everything going. So... Oh, the Achilles are always so fun on these models. Again, they are much, much easier if you do this before you put the gun on. But again, that is not always an option for you or for me. And maybe you're the one who's building it and you forgot. And now look where you're at. You've got to paint around it. So it is a challenge, right? Challenge means that you're going to hopefully learn a new skill or get better at a skill that you already do. And so by the end of it, you will be able to I do it better. Again, we're holding it real funky here, upside down, sort of all sorts of ways to try to get this thing coated. Again, that might be kind of hard to see, but this is a really funky angle. So, sort of a bronze color, and uh, complete. Right, got that on the Aquila. Actually didn't make too many mistakes other than just a couple little bits around that collar. Perfect. All right, so I think we can come back in on that gun, and we're going to just use some true black paint here. I, I say true black. What I mean by that is it's just a black color. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of anything else in it. Now, this is really, really thin down. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely too thin down. Uh, so I'll we'll actually just go right back to that contrast paint and see what we can do with that. The contrast paint, I think probably going to be the better way to, to do this just because it's going to make it a little bit faster and a little bit cleaner again based on the reference images that we have access to looks like they're bolt guns pretty much black with a gold Achilles. so that's going to be what we do darken this down a lot uh, again it's going over green which means that it's not going to be super black with just one coat we're going to, need to do multiple and I mean a lot, a lot compared to what I normally paint. Uh, normally I'm batch painting uh, five to 10 models at a time, which is how I crank out so many models. And I'll do all of the greens on all five, you know, on all 10 models, and all the yellows, and then all the bronze, and then all the black or whatever. And that's what I normally do. And using that batch painting method, I'm able to really get a lot of models painted. Uh, and they are all, I have, relatively good quality paint job. I don't do any free hands. Sometimes I'll throw transfers on there. Sometimes I don't, just kind of depends. Uh, but for the most part, that's what I do for getting my models painted. Again, just like we talked about last time, painting to 80%. All of those Marines or models or whatever that I'm painting are painted to about an 80% of my best, which means that that leaves the other 20% for me to come back and fix any minor, minor mistakes or add some more detail to it. All right, so looking at this here, from where are we gonna go? If you have a mistake, it's not the end of the world, right? They are very, very easy to fix. So we're just gonna come right on in, and we're just gonna paint over all these mistakes on the shoulder pad, because their shoulder trim is actually green. Okay. Uh, these bags are going to get painted brown, so I'm not too concerned about that. The backpack here just has a couple little spots. Oops. This is where having another paintbrush that is able to take paint off really comes in handy. And 
this paintbrush is just useless. That paintbrush has like, actually it has like six bristles. I'm not even joking. So I don't know why I still have it. Uh, the bristles on it just keep kind of falling out. It was not a high quality brush to begin with. And the way that I treat my brushes uh, with the minimal maintenance that they get uh, means that they do not last forever in my studio. So that is a okay. They will be replaced. They were not expensive. And they really weren't meant to last forever, uh, those paintbrushes, especially. They're camel hair, I think, or something. So it's nothing, you know, nothing too crazy. But let's just get the Mephiston Red out. Mephiston Red, probably my favorite red. It's bright, but it's not too bright, which is uh, always a hard thing to find. Paint that works, that doesn't uh, overdo itself. Okay, get that painted there. Whoa, oh my goodness, yeah. That, that was a huge mistake. So we're gonna easily fix that, no problem. All right, let's steady our hands here for the eyes. Little dot in there, and another little dot right there, cross. Ooh, <laughs> yep. Like I, uh, like I anticipated just a little bit too big. So we're going to let all that dry and we're going to clean that up. All right. So now on to the trickiest bit, this annoyingly complicated freehand. Now we're going to fix the eyes. Uh, once everything dries in there, uh, just kind of went back over, cleaned everything up. And then we just need to put a dab of red in each one of those eyes. But I uh, really, what we need to do is get this freehand started. Now it, it's, in my opinion, needlessly complicated, but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and kinda kinda get after it here. So, again, um, Mantis Warriors, their symbol is sort of a praying mantis head. Now, I'm not entirely sure how the White Scars sort of came to this conclusion of this is what they wanted their uh, successor chapter to be and maybe they didn't uh, come to that conclusion maybe someone came to that conclusion for them but regardless it is a very very strange connection between this and then you've got the sort of mongolian aesthetic uh, that the rest of them have going for them so let's bring this around and then you've got these sort of mandibles that come out and down um yeah so we'll say that's pretty close for half of it um let's try to finish this pointy little mandible here again let's get this black real thin so it comes off the brush smoothly and uh let's see if we can't see if we can't do something here gonna be a bit tricky Okay, so let's just fill this in while we're here. Again, we're, we're for sure gonna come back anyways. So uh, there's that sort of mandible filled in and then we're just gonna do a straight line down to here. And then we're gonna fill in this head portion. And then it's going to end up being a sort of a half of a head and there's gonna be an eye right in there. Oh man, okay, I mean, it doesn't look terrible. Uh, definitely gonna to need to put a few more coats on there. So there's half of it. Uh, it's sort of a praying mantis looking right at you. Again, you've probably seen the picture of it on uh, the thumbnail perhaps. So let's see here. We're gonna to try to really be stable and just do our best to get the other half of this going. There's the tiniest gap between the two halves, which is kind of what's throwing me off. Okay. Get that mandible 
down. You know, it doesn't actually look that terrible. Definitely could be worse. Speaking of worse, we're about to make it worse, I bet. No, that actually worked out pretty smoothly. All right, let's fill this in. Okay, I'm probably gonna need multiple coats here, just like with the other one. But nice and smooth here. I'm gonna keep that paint real thin. That way it just flows right off the brush. Let's see, let's come up with a better way to hold this thing. That'll work. You also don't want your hands to cramp, so changing positions a lot um, and how you hold it definitely helps. Keep it, at least from your hand cramping up. Okay, we can kind of sort of see roughly. That's like a praying mantis. Um, there's obviously one side that's a little better than the other, but you know that tends to happen from time to time. And then, hmm, yeah, I mean, really we'll just go back over the black with another layer, a little bit thicker. Don't want it too thick though. And then uh, we can do those eyes and then we'll, we'll, we'll see where we're at there. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the second sort of half that we did is definitely a little worse for wears. Could use some yellow to touch it up, and we might, might break that yellow back out and just get it tightened up a little bit in there. But for now, we'll do that. That to come down to a point, and we're... Gonna have to repaint some of this green. Sort of expected that anyway, so it's not a big deal. Ooh, should not have done that. Man, I should not have done that. Okay. Wow, yeah, really should not have done that. Okay, um, so there's that. We're definitely gonna need the yellow now. Let's clean that black off and get this yellow. And let's see where we are at. So, I mean, we could thin out some on this side. And then in the middle. Um, sort of getting there. Let's correct this corner since we've got it on our brush. Okay, so you know, it doesn't look terrible. It really doesn't. I mean, for for sort of what I'm capable of, I'm actually very happy with that. And then finally, uh, let's do the eyes. So the eyes are these big sort of red. So we're gonna get some more Mephist and red out here for that. These big red things. And let's just see how we can ruin this. So the eyes are just these sort of 
big red dots on the edges. So there's that one. There, it kind of comes down at an angle, sort of. I mean, that's fair. And then, so right across here, we've got this one. Same. Looking for sort of the same thing. Okay, you know? Worked out fairly well. Um, but yeah, there's a little dot on that one, on the shoulder pad. Again, these weren't the perfect Marines, but that's uh, the sort of realistic side of things, right? Not everybody is, a, is an affiliate with GW and just can get free minis sent to their house to paint. So we're looking at it from the real side of things. <laughs> it doesn't really look a lot like the symbol, but it is going to work for me. You know, I am happy with that. So let's get that red in those eyes since we've got it on the brush, on the palette. Got to be real, real gentle here. Just enough. Get it right there. Yeah, oh no. Well, one worked out really well, and the other one turned out quite poorly. I hate, really, I hate doing eye lenses. I mean, I know it's a necessary part. It's not like a face where you can just throw some, you know, flesh shade on it and pass. You gotta do a little bit of effort, but, you know, we'll say that those eyes are, are looking good now. There's one side, the other side, based on this reference image I've got here. Looks like it's just got an sort of a black arrow. So let's let's just dig through our No, actually we've got transfers, but we're not gonna use transfers. We're gonna try to we're gonna freehand this, because why not? Uh, the arrow is gonna be pointing towards the, the front of the marine, because uh, that's how it is in the, oh, it's actually pointing upwards. Never mind. So we're going to have it pointing upwards. Uh, let's get a little bit of this black off. And then let's just go ahead and just sketch it out. I'm going to go through the middle. You might have to repaint some of that red. No problem. There's that. There's that. Straight across. And then let's go straight down. So there we go. Nice. And then just kind of to improve that point a little bit, and we're going to fill that in. And uh, I'll, I'll cut back to once we have that. All right. So it looks like. That arrow's up and on there. Again, not perfect freehand, but for my skill level, I am very happy with that. That mantis <laughs> does looks very silly. Sorry, clean my brush. Um, the mantis looks very silly, but honestly, I kind of like it. It's already growing on me. All right, um, let's see. That gun can just use one more real you know, thin coat of black. Uh, so I'm going to take some of this true black that I have on my palette here. And I'm just gonna come back over real thin down, almost like a glazing consistency, and just make sure that it's all very, very dark. Uh, this true black paint is a craft paint, as I mentioned before, and it actually works really, really good uh, for matte, very, very matte painting. Uh, in fact, it's so matte that it is almost chalky, which is, uh, you know, not ideal. It's not quite chalky, but it almost gets to that point. So it's, it's right there on the line of what you'd want to have. But uh, we've got that darkened down, backpack and all that. Oh, almost forgot that brown. Now the brown on our palette is surely dried out. Yeah, it is dried out now. So let's go ahead and get some of that uh, you didn't get to see it last time, so Terra Matte or Flat Earth from Vallejo. All right, so 
Looks like his bag is very, very dark. Uh, we're gonna let everything dry here. We're gonna do a dry brush over that um, backpack with a little bit of gray, dark, dark gray, just to sort of bring some of that detail out because it's very, very flat. And uh, let's work on the base while all that is drying. So <clears throat> let's try to keep in the theme here of that sort of darkish grayish base. Uh, and I've got some craft paints here that are gonna work great. I use these craft paints all the time. Literally craft smart, like Walmart for bases, terrain, that sort of stuff. It does not make a difference, I promise you. You can spend as much as you want or as little as you want when it comes to painting uh, Warhammer miniatures. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's just gonna end up being what it is. So if you want to spend all that money and get those nicer paints and use those for every little thing that you do, please do that because you're gonna make some awesome minis that you could win competitions with. But for everybody else who just wants to have painted minis to play with, get whatever you can afford. All right, let's go ahead and get it. Get that lovely oil wash back out. Get that shaking up. So we're gonna take our little dropper here, send those drops into the airbrush. I know you can't see that, but we're doing it, trust me. And let's go ahead and get started. Let's move this out of the way so we do not spill that oil paint or we're gonna be in a world of pain. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is that it brings all those colors down when you're going through the airbrush. Something that does work really nice with the airbrush in this is that the fact that it is very, very sort of movable. So we're gonna take some white spirits, which is what I have in here. We're gonna put some out onto the lid or you know, whatever, pour some out. Take a air cleaner, and we're gonna go ahead and use this for the removal of some of this. So, I mean, you've definitely seen people do this online, right? You just kind of come in through real, real light, real light, and you're just gonna just reactivate that, and you're gonna take it off. Gonna go super light with this because you really don't want to take off that lower layer of paint now if you were really going to take your time with this something that you could do is you could uh, put a layer of sort of gloss varnish on first let that dry then come in with this uh, but that's not really necessary if you go real light Probably a makeup sponge would be the easiest thing to use for this, but I just didn't have any uh, lying around at the moment. But if you have some, that would probably be the best thing to use. So a little dry, we'll paint the base rim. Uh, we'll dry brush that base uh, if we need to, and then I will uh, see you guys once all that's completed. All right, so we have basically completed it other than just getting that base rim painted up. So what are some things that uh, went well here? I would say the big thing that went well is going to be the Mantis shoulder pad. Now, I know it doesn't look great. <laughs> the eyes, all of it, it really doesn't look great. But I think it's better than the last videos. So maybe, just maybe, that uh, the Astral Claw was my first ever Space Marine shoulder freehand. And things are just going to get better. And I hope that they do get better from here. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we've got two down now. So two of those Marines down from the Badab Wars and hopefully many, many more to come. Uh, if you have any questions, you can follow my Instagram, bolters underscore and underscore brushes. And I had that Instagram a long time before. I've actually had this YouTube channel. The channel itself is really just for me to kind of document this stuff. Like I said, I like talking. When I paint, I like to be sort of social and uh, that sort of thing. And, you know, when I paint, I like to be around other people, talk to them, hear about their painting tips and that sort of thing. So maybe 
you will find that just as interesting. But otherwise, uh, you guys take it easy, and I will see you in the next one.